Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to use Windows 7 parental controls. It's key to remember that in order for Windows 7 parental controls to work effectively, every computer user in the household must have their own unique username and password. And no password sharing is allowed and every user logs in truly as themselves and when they're done they log out. So I'm on my Windows 7 virtual desktop running in VMware Player for this demonstration. And I need to click the Start button and then click on Control Panel and go to User Accounts and Family Safety. And from here I'll go to User Accounts. And right now, BK Lab, that's me. If I have a child I'm going to share my computer with, I need to create a user account uh, for my child. So I'm going to manage another account and then I'm going to create a new account and I'm going to create an account called Bobby. And Bobby's my child. Bobby is a standard user. And we'll create the account. Once the user account is created, you then must set a password. Notice Rocky and BK Lab say they're password protected and Bobby does not yet. So if we click on Bobby, we can create a password. This only occurs when the user account is new. So I'm going to type in a password for Bobby. And then we will create the password. If we'd like to change the picture, we could also do that by clicking on change the picture and defining a different picture or browsing for maybe a actual picture of Bobby. I'm cool with the sailboat for now, so we'll just cancel out of there. The next step is to set up parental controls and I can either do that here by clicking on set up parental controls or I can go back into user accounts and family safety and I can go into parental controls from here. And if I select Bobby as an individual or as a user that is going to have parental controls, I can go and turn them on here and force current settings. So right now there are no time limits, there are no game ratings, and there are no program limits. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on time limits. So right now everything is allowed and nothing's blocked. Blocked is blue. So I'd like to block all computer use from midnight until 8 a.m. And I'd also like to block all computer use from 10 p.m. to midnight. Additionally, I would like to block computer use until 11 a.m. on Sunday, and then I'm going to block 8 to 11, and then I'll allow computer use until 1, and then I'm going to block computer use again until 5 p.m. and allow it until 9. And Monday, I'm going to block everything during school hours, so 3 o'clock, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. is blocked. I'm going to allow two hours from 3 to 5. Then I'll block again from 5 to 7 and allow computer use from 7 to 10. Friday, I'm going to block school hours, 8 to 3, but I'm going to allow computer use all afternoon and evening until 10 o'clock. And then Saturday, we are going to allow two hours in the morning for homework reasons and then block again until 5 o'clock and then allow during the evening as well. So I just made a hypothetical grid for which computer use is going to be allowed and blocked. You'll note my time here is 1212. For demonstration reasons, I'm going to go ahead and allow usage on Sunday up until 12, but I'm going to block from noon to 1 on Sunday as well. And we'll click OK. In a minute here, I'm going to change my system time, log in as Bobby, and show you what how parental controls work and what happens to Bobby when he hits noon. So before we do that, though, I'm going to go into games. And I'm going to specify Bobby can play games. Yes, you could say no, and now games are just turned off. But I will say yes, and then I'm going to set game ratings. Uh, Bobby is not quite a teenager yet. So if we move the bullet to everyone 10 plus, that includes early childhood, everyone, and everyone 10 plus. 
but we don't quite have teen or mature or adults only access yet. I also have the ability to allow games with no rating or block games with no rating and I'm going to block games with no rating. If the game hasn't been rated there is no content control therefore it's blocked. If you scroll down you'll also see that you can block individual content types such as drug and alcohol reference, blood and gore, am animated blood, edutainment, fantasy violence, language, lyrics, mild drug and tobacco reference. There's a lot of individual things you can block that you should read through and take a look at when you're setting up an actual policy for somebody in your household. So I will click OK on this and then I can click OK and go back to allow and block specific programs. Right now Bobby can use all programs or Bobby can only use the programs I allow. So I'm going to put a bullet here and specify only the programs that I allow. And this computer is a demonstration computer so it doesn't have a lot of programs on it. But we actually have WordPad. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and allow WordPad. And then there are some default programs in the operating system that are allowed to run such as Calculator. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK on that. Your home computer will have more installed programs on it and please feel free to specify the programs that your child is allowed and or not allowed to use. So in real life I would maybe set it up so my child would not be allowed to open the banking software. So we'll click on OK and we've now created parental controls for Bobby. And I'm going to go ahead and close control panel and I'm going to turn my system time back to 11.57 a.m. because I want to log in as Bobby, launch a couple of programs, and then show you what happens to a restricted profile when they're logged in and the noon time rolls around, which is the time where we said they aren't allowed to be logged on anymore. So we will log off the administrator account and then log back in as Bobby. So we'll click on Bobby and input Bobby's password and log on. Part of the log on program is going to start certain programs to run in the background so we are getting parental control blockage messages already. We'll just click OK through those messages and show you that we can run certain programs. So if we click on start and try to run WordPad WordPad is allowed to run. If we click on other programs too like Calculator which are part of the operating system those programs are also allowed to run. One of the programs we didn't allow to run though was the math input panel. So if we click on start and go to all programs and then choose accessories and then choose the math input panel parental controls is blocking this program. So that's an example of what would happen to a program that you had chosen to block as a parent in the parental control environment. So we'll click OK to that. Now Internet Explorer is also allowed to run by default. And here you'll see I'm getting a pop-up message telling me I'm going to be logged out in one minute due to parental controls. So let's go ahead and wait one minute and you will see what happens to your child when the operating system invokes parental controls on them and that will happen to Bobby at uh, 12 o'clock p.m. or noon. So noon just rolled around and Bobby was logged out. You'll see on the switch user interface that Bobby is currently logged on and if Bobby tries to log in again Bobby gets a message. Your account has time restrictions that prevent you from logging on at this time. Please try again later. Bobby's work is not lost, however. If Bobby's working on homework and needs to print something and contacts you as a parent and says, I need another hour to finish my homework, it's pretty easy for you to allow that access. Go ahead and click on Switch User. Log on as your administrative account.
click on Start, go into Control Panel, go back into User Accounts and Family Safety, Parental Controls, choose your child that needs to have a modification so they can finish their work, click on Time Limits, and adjust that Allowed by one hour. So I'm going to extend that until one o'clock, click on OK, click on OK, close the control panel. Now I'll log off as administrator again. So I'll log on as Bobby again. You'll see that Bobby's work is still present. There's the calculator that we were running and there's the WordPad doc that I had typed in allowed to run. So this has been a thorough demonstration on how to create local user accounts and establish parental controls using the built-in features of Windows 7. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you very much for watching.